It's recording. Oh, okay. Thank you, man. God, my friends, that's what we got to contend with one day, is we got to contend with Jesus Christ as either our judge or our Savior. That's right. It doesn't matter, you know, what doesn't matter in 500 years who wins the game today? What matters hey, is if your sin yeah. has been given an account of. Has your sin been taken <laughs> care of? It doesn't matter if the Rams win or the Patriots win in a million years. What will matter is whether your sin was taken care of in this lifetime. Amen. My friend, think about no that doubt. for a quick second. No doubt. You, your team could win today. <laughs> your team could win today, and you could spend eternity hey, in hell yeah. because of your sin. <laughs> think about that for a quick second. You could spend eternity <laughs> in a place that Jesus talked about a lot. Mm. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. There will be no rest day or night. You will be salt and with fire. Mm. My friend, think about that for a second, how frightening that is that your sins are not accounted for. Jesus guarantees you that you'll wind up in hell. Why are you holding your hands up, man? Uh, you are, but you are on it. Whether even if you choose not to believe it, you're still on it, my friend. Because your sin will find you out. That's the truth. Always remember that. Our sin will find us out. Don't forget about that. Yes, sir. What's up? How did you forgive you? Yeah, we were walking. No, no, I didn't say I didn't say that. I said, how? How? How does he forgive you? How does he forgive you, my friend? I appreciate you coming back. But remember, ma'am, we've all got that in common. Whether we're little or big, whether we're short or fat, skinny or tall, we all have to stand before a holy God that is just. God is just. See, most people know about the love of God, but they don't know about the justice of God. They don't know that God is totally, absolutely just. That means He's not going to give you a day pass for sin. Every secret that you're hiding from your wife, or you're hiding from your friend, or hiding from your mother, will be revealed on Judgment Day. These things will be hidden. As a matter of fact, God knows you how much, yeah, He knows you so well, that he knows every hair on your head. Every hair on your head is counted. Okay? So if that guy that you're dealing with knows every hair on your head, what's he going to do with your sin? It's not hidden from him, fellas. Your sin is not hidden from God at all. You only have, you only have, to, you have to think, man, what's going to happen to me on judgment day? How am I going to if I died right now I fell over dead? What's going to happen to me on judgment day? Where am I going to go? What is, what's God going to do to me? And it doesn't have to be a mystery for us anymore. God doesn't want us to be in an area of gray. He wants us to know black and white what's going to happen. He wants us to know the truth and the false. See, he says this very clearly, and this is the one that dinged me. He said that no, he says in Revelation 20 by 8, the scripture says that all liars will have their place in the lake of fire. All liars will have their place in the lake of fire. Now, you may know religion. You may be a very religious person. You know, you may know things, but are you a liar? Have you told lies in the past? If you have, that makes you right. If you tell lies, it makes you what? It makes you a liar. So that begs the question, man. If it says, the Bible says that all liars will have their place in the lake of fire, where does that you? Where does that put you, my friend? If all liars will have their place in the lake of fire. That us, including me, that would put us in a, in a bad spot with God. That would put us under God's judgment, under God's wrath. And my friend, the Bible clearly says that it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. It's a fearful thing. You should be terrified of the fact that God is just and that He's going to judge you. My friend, you should call out on the mercy of God now while you have a chance. Amen. 
Now is the acceptable day of salvation. Not tomorrow. Think about this for a second. Those poor souls that got up early on the morning of September 11th. They boarded the train. They rode into downtown Manhattan. Normal day. They went up into the building. Looked like a normal day. And then some guy slammed the plane into the building that day. They had no clue. Hey, clue. That that plane was going to hit that building and that they were going to be in a building collapse. Some of those people were so terrified that they jumped to their death. I don't know if you guys remember that. I remember seeing the pictures of those poor souls jumping out of the World Trade Centers and falling to their death other than being burned. But think about this. The Bible says that in the Holy Scriptures that the sinner will be burned. He said in Lazarus, in the rich man story, rich man says, Abraham, have mercy on me because I'm in torment in these flames. So the people of the World Trade Center jumped out of the buildings to avoid the flames. And yet, guess what? If you die, you'll go directly into them according to the rich man. What happened to him? So, so that's a scary thing. It's a terrifying thing. And the reason that God sends people to punishment because of his justice. He's not going to turn a blind eye to your sin. He's not going to wink and give you a pass. He says that he will judge sin wherever it's found. It doesn't matter if you're black or white, if you're rich or poor, it makes no difference. What makes a difference is that whether you're under your judgment for your sin or not under your judgment for your sin. So where are you? Have you sinned against God? Have you done things that are wrong against your conscience? Have you done things in your life that you violated your very conscience, my friend? Most of us have violated our conscience. We have violated. We have done stuff that's wrong. So how does a person get right with God? Do they say, oh, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry? No. These things don't get you right with God. What gets you right is a contrite heart to repent and put your faith and trust in Jesus. Only God can save you. See, your sin is against God, and the only person that can save you is God himself. You cannot save yourself. Here's what it, it says in the scriptures, just to show you. It's easier for a leopard to change his spots than it is for a sinner to change his ways. So a leopard that hunts down other animals and eats them has spots on his skin, on his fur. And it's easier for the leopard to change his spots than it is for the sinner to change himself. You need to have a new heart. Do you have a new heart? Yeah. How do you get one? Well, that's a great question. How do you get a new heart? A new heart? A new heart? Do you, do you go to the heart doctor to get a new heart? <laughs> yes, but we're not talking about your physical heart. Yeah. We're talking about your spiritual that's heart. It. That's it. So can a heart doctor give you <laughs> a spiritual heart, lady? No. The heart doctor cannot give you a spiritual heart. Do you go to Roto Rooter to have him clean your pipes and maybe he will change your heart? No. You need to go to the person that you've sinned against. You've sinned against God. You need to go to God to have your heart changed. You don't need to go to the mosque. You don't need to go to mass. You don't need to go and talk to a priest. You need to talk to the person that you've offended with your sins. So what kind of heart you got You've then? offended God with your sins. What kind of heart you got? You've got to get a new heart. Jesus said this. And this is the most famous guy in history who said this. He said, unless a man is born again, yeah. he will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. But Jesus said that. Not yeah. me. Say it. Jesus said that. So if Jesus said that, Maybe you should take some heed because they're not going to be talking about what you said 2,000 years from now, but we will be talking about what Jesus said 2,000 years from now. So my friend, make sure that you're right because the Bible says there's a way that seems right unto a man that the end thereof is death. Yeah. So a lot of people walk along going, I'm living the righteous path, I'm walking the righteous path, I'm trying to be a good man or a good woman. But the Bible says the end thereof is death. So your way may be seen right, but the end is death. See, when people walk by me, I know that the end, their end way is death when they cuss at me. I had a, a guy who cussed at my friend over here in the street just a little while ago. Yeah, yeah. He takes works for the city of Atlanta, and he told my friend to get the blank out of the street. Oh! And I could see the bitterness in that young man's heart. 
Yeah. Hot and hot. But his supervisor didn't see that, but guess what? God saw that earlier. Yeah. God saw that man cuss him out, and he sees the bitterness <laughs> in his heart, my friend. Amen. So guess what happens when you have a better heart? A better heart shows that God has not gotten a hold of your heart and changed it. Ooh. It shows that he has not transformed your heart. <laughs> It shows that you've not been born again. So my friend, there's nothing more important than being born again and being righteous and holy. If you're not holy, the Bible says, without holiness, nobody will see the Lord God. Did you know that if Donald Trump is not holy, he will not see the Lord God? Did you know if Barack Obama is not holy, he will not see, the, see God? Did you know if George Bush... Is not holy, he will not see God. Hmm. Did you know Bill Clinton, if he's not holy, he will not see God? Yeah. If you're not holy, holy, you will not see God. Because I'm holy. So you may say, well, Chris, you don't look all that holy. You're not glowing, you're not wearing white clothes, and you don't have a halo. But the Lord has transformed me in my heart. He's made me a new creation. I don't walk around trying to please God anymore going, boy, I hope he's pleased with what I did today. Amen. I hope I might get into heaven. Guess what, my friend? That, that that path is the broad road that leads to death. Yeah. There's a there's a narrow road that leads to life, and a broad road that leads to destruction. Any religion that tells you to do things, to try to do things to get right with God, is the broad road to destruction. My family members are on I was going to say Muhammad right now are on the broad road that leads to destruction. My friends that are following Buddha right now are on the broad road that leads to destruction. My uncles that are Mormons right now that are following him are on the broad road to destruction because they all tell you one thing. Do something and maybe God will be pleased with what you've done. Just do it. But my friend, that is the religion of doo-doo. Hmm. That is the religion of doo-doo. We -doo. have to do things in order to be right with God. Go to Mecca. Go pray the rosary. Go talk to a priest. Hit yourself on the ground. Pray to a building five times a day. Do all these things and maybe God will be pleased with you. But my friend, God is not pleased with your work. It says that our good deeds are as filthy minstrel rags mm. to a holy God. That's hey, what the scripture says. Mm. It says that our good works are as a woman's minstrel rags. That's how good your works are, my friend. That's what your religion do. What if I came up on your birthday and I gave you a gift of used What if I came up on your birthday and I gave you a gift of used tampons for your birthday? That's what it's like when we say we're trying to do good works for God. We're handing him something filthy and tainted and nasty and pure. Mm. My friend, we need the pure work of Jesus Christ. That's what makes me holy and pure and clean is Jesus. Not my own works, not my own deeds, but what Jesus did for me. My friend, if you say, I'm going to get into heaven because I'm going to live a better life or because I'm only trying to do better deeds, my friend, you're deceived. My friend, you will never do enough to make yourself right with God. It's a treadmill that goes nowhere. It's a treadmill that goes nowhere. When people say you've got to do these things to make the most high happy, you've got to do all these great deeds to make God happy. And guess what happens, my friends? You wind up on a treadmill that leads to nowhere, that leads to hell. Because you're trusting in your own works. You're trusting in your own deeds, my friends. And don't do that, my friends. I'm not, a, I'm not a person that enjoys seeing people go to hell, but God's just, and He's going to deal with all of our sins. Give another chance, Lord. Give He's another chance. He's going to deal with lying. I'm He's going to deal with stealing. He's going to deal give with another chance, Lord. You can't tell your wife or your Please girlfriend. give another chance. He's going he's gonna to be bringing those things to bear for you to see. So very soon, the very secrets that you hide in your heart that you don't want anybody to know about will be brought to bear for a God that is holy and pure. My friend, think about that for a second. There's a famous homicide investigator that says that almost everybody has a secret that they can't tell people because mm. they're ashamed. Hey, Glow! They're embarrassed. My friend, you probably have a secret that you cannot tell anybody. Maybe you stole something one time. Maybe you robbed something one time. Maybe you cheated on your wife. Maybe you cheated on your girlfriend and you can't tell them these things. You're too embarrassed about it. But my friend, these things will be all brought into the light in the damn judgment. Hey, glory! 
These things will all be brought yeah. to light, my friend. Yeah. Everything the Bible says that God find has out. every hair on your head numbered. He has every hair on our head numbered. So do you think there are secrets that nobody else knows about that God doesn't know about these things? My friend, now is the time to call out to him to be forgiven, to erase your sin. The Bible says that God remembers the sin as far as the east is from the west. As far as the east from the west, and he only forgets those sins if they're hidden in Christ. He only doesn't remember the sins if they're hidden in Christ. Not if you go to church. Your church attendance doesn't get you right with God. Going to church doesn't, doesn't make you a Christian, just like going to McDonald's doesn't make me a hamburger. <laughs> going to McDonald's doesn't make me run on McDonald's. I look like him some morning, so I'm like, oh. But going to church doesn't no, make a person a Christian. What makes a person a Christian is to repent yeah. and put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ to be saved alone. It is for by grace you are saved through faith, and this is not of yourself. It's a gift of God, not by works, lest any man should boast. Think about that. We are saved by God's grace alone through faith alone. Grace. And it's a no. gift. Now, if I walk Give up to you chance, and Lord. you Give gave me a brand new Mercedes Benz, I and I said, oh, boy, thank Give you for that chance, Mercedes Lord. Benz, sir. I'm going to give you a nickel. I'm going to give you a nickel for that Mercedes Benz. <laughs> I would laugh at you. Yeah. I'd say, what kind of foolishness is that you're trying to pay me a nickel for a Mercedes Benz? Hey, the same on. way when we go to Jesus and say, let me help add to the cross and what you did on the cross. It's an affront to a holy God who's pure and clean and without sin. Remember that, my friends. When we go and we offer our good deeds to God, He laughs at us. He mocks and scoffs to say that we're going to earn our way into heaven through our works or deeds or actions or our thoughts. When in fact, Jesus says very clearly that we have to have a new heart. That all of us have to have the new heart of salvation that's only given through Jesus Christ alone. Now, why should you believe in Jesus? Seriously. He could be just like any of the other people. He could be like Muhammad. He could be like Buddha. He could be like uh, uh, Joseph Smith. He could be like any of these people. <laughs> I'll give you one, one piece of, pay, of evidence Smith. to take a look at, and that's the resurrection of Jesus. <laughs> See, Jesus died and was buried in the ground. He was murdered by the Romans. He was crucified, and then they put him in the ground, and he came back to life three days later. Right? How many people do you know that have come back to life three days later after being dead? None. Zero. You can't find one person in history that's come back to life three days later. Now get this. What happened to the disciples of Jesus that believed and saw when he came back to life? They were slaughtered. Did you know that all of the disciples of Jesus were slaughtered except for which disciple? Do you know which disciple? John. John! That's right. Only John was not slaughtered. Thomas, guess what happened to Thomas? Thomas went all the way from Israel. He went all the way to India, to Chennai, India. I don't know if anybody's from India here, but he went to Chennai, India. And he was speared to death in India. Get that. Thomas, doubting Thomas, was speared to death in India. <laughs> wow. Paul was get taken him, get him, get and Paul's head was chopped off because of what he believed. No, but because of what he saw and believed. Yeah. How about Peter? Yeah. Peter was crucified where? If Peter was getting all this power because of his belief in Jesus, why was he crucified upside down for a lie? <laughs> why did people, Peter go to his grave for a lie? Stephen was Peter going to was death. crucified upside down. Here's another one. Andrew yeah. was crucified in the form of an X. Mm. He was put on an axe and crucified. Hey, the disciples, except for John, were slaughtered. Yeah. They were all slaughtered because main of what treatment. they believed. In the main friend, treatment. You don't find liars giving their life up for something that's not true. They could have said, Caesar is Lord and live. <laughs> Paul could have said that. Peter could have said that. Yeah. Andrew could have said, Say. Caesar is Lord and he would have lived. And guess what? They gave their lives for what they both saw. They gave their lives for what they saw. Eyewitness. Eyewitness testimony. My friend, you can be sent to the prison. You can be sent to prison and be put to death in the electric chair or the gas chamber, depending on what they do in the state of Georgia now, based on eyewitness testimony. Hmm. Eyewitness testimony can get you put in the electric chair in the state of Georgia. So we have three eyewitnesses. No, excuse me. Give me another chance, Lord. Give me another chance. I'll leave it there. Give me another chance. Leave it, Lord. So I'll leave it there. Give me another chance, Lord. Please. He's going to the universal sin. Give me another chance, Lord. 
because of what they saw. Now, here's another thing, too. Jesus said about the temple on, of Jerusalem, he said, on one stone would be left hand. upon another stone. He predicted sin, that Lord. because you know what Jan. happened? The temple is not there today. Not one stone is left on top of another stone. If you go to Ezra, you can go to Temple Mount, and you can see the prophecy of Jesus is accurate and true because there's not one stone left on top of another one. So what do you do with all this? Well, you can harden your heart, and you can say, I'm going to live my own way, and I'm not going to follow God, and I'm not going to submit to Him, and waste your life, waste your life chasing vain things, money, sex, fame, fortune. You can, you, you can waste your life spending it trying to chase these things, or you can honor your life and give your life to follow after the living God. My friend, you won't be disappointed if you follow after God. You may not have happiness, but you will certainly have you will certainly have righteousness. Think about that, friends. What's more important, your happiness or being righteous? Righteous, hands down. They're not even close to each other. You can be happy and on your way to hell. All right, bless but the you may be unhappy and righteous. So, my friends, make sure that you're righteous yeah, before God, that God has forgiven you for He's been working on that job. His holiness and his righteousness. Is he still doing that too? Did you know that? Yeah, but he's working out all. Uh, uh, God's sight. John is holy. You know why this man over here is holy, God? It's because Jesus has given him his holiness. Now he's a holy man. Not because he's a good man. Yeah, I think so, but they're trying to get him a place, though. Not because he's got God's moral law, which he hasn't, which none of us have. I've had people out here all the time, and they tell me, you just got to be a little better life. You just got to be a little better. You just got to start following the law of God more so thoroughly. And then everything will be fine, but and my you friend, know, get restored and all he who stumbles at one you know, point stumbles at the entire point. Do, you know. Amen I'm and amen. Let's pray. Let's pray. We got to pay them bills. I got loans, so we got to pay off. That's why we're doing it. It's been a blessing. I'm going to show you something. Hey, y'all pray, man. We're going to pray. Here you go, sir. Cut it off. Thank you, buddy. We're going to pray.